So I have two questions. One is, do you think that over time this might then bring that upper end down so it, it, it becomes more sustainable and more affordable? And what would be that role for government? Um, because we're a provincial party, so we look yeah. at um, you know, what would make the best kind of provincial policy. So whatever order you want to deal with those. Okay, great. Well, I think on the first one, Jane, um, I hope in no small measure that Ash can make an impact in the market in demonstrating that you can do small and you can do affordable. I would love it to be the catalyst for all of these things. Mm -hmm. Um, I would love to be able to put enough ash homes out in the market that ash almost in and of itself makes the change. But I don't know if we're going to get quite that far. <laughs> I'll be, that'll be another die yeah, happy moment if we get there. <laughs> uh, what I do hope that we can do in no small measure is to spark a discussion, to spark a broad rethinking um, in communities and municipalities and the development industry and in, at the provincial government level about the whole question of affordable housing. How mm -hmm. can you do it? I, I hope we spur, in no small way, some almost revolution in the way that we generally approach home development. And if it means we've got a bunch of people mimicking what we've done, that, that would be great. You know, the old adage about flattery is the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in this case, you know, flattery would be the best form of competition I could imagine. Mm -hmm. um, the provincial government is an interesting question. I think, as I've said earlier, I'm not convinced that by and large government needs to be the largest player mm -hmm. in the development or delivery of housing. I think BC Housing has a role to play in BC. Um, I think for a lot of reasons it will always have a role to play, particularly at the uh, shelter end of the market, mm -hmm. trying to solve the homelessness problem. Because I think by and large it's very difficult um, when you think about the economics of shelter housing or well below market housing, it's very difficult to imagine how a private investor, a private owner could own a rental housing building um, and make a reasonable rate of return mm -hmm. um, without being tempted, legitimately tempted, to want to increase rents if rents in the general marketplace are changing. Um, it's something we've thought a lot about and I think you and I were talking before we, we started taping about how can you realistically do that? Um, yeah. And I'm not sure you can. So at a, there's probably always going to be both a policy role and a funding role for organizations like BC Housing and that end of the market. But over and above that, it, I think there is less and less need for government to be involved, certainly not in subsidizing the kind of work that we do. Right. It's great to have, but we don't need it. Where government needs to play a role is really working um, with the development industry and working with municipalities to look at how you can you can streamline and strengthen zoning and approval processes, community approval processes. Um, it's often frustrating for a developer when you uh, are coming forward with a development, and particularly where you think you've got something that meets a demonstrable need for housing or for um, parking solutions, any of those things. Yeah. And you know, as you know, Jane, from being on a council, time is money to mm -hmm. any developer. Mm -hmm. And when you're faced with a situation where it's absolutely unpredictable, you have no idea how long it's going to take to get an approval, it becomes costly and it, become, it just complicates the whole task of getting a project off the ground and being able to deliver it in a way that allows you to price units at an affordable level. Mm -hmm. Government has a role to play there. The provincial government is the only level of government that can really bring municipalities and the development industry and all of the other stakeholders together for that kind of dialogue to figure out, well, sure, communities have a legitimate role to play in saying, we have concerns about that particular building, or gee, what if you reduce parking or eliminate parking, what's going to happen? What's the effect in our neighborhood? And those are all very legitimate and very fair questions. Yeah. But at some point, we've got to, we've got to, agree to put some kind of reasonable time frame on those kinds of dialogues. These things can't go on forever. Oh, I know. I mean, a development uh, can be a very costly process to try and get uh, approval from beginning of talking to a municipality to the point in time that it's approved. And, you know, you have the, the vagaries of a council, so you can lose in the end on a 4-3 split or uh, whatever. I know it's a very, um, very challenging process. And there has to be 
some way that we can streamline that um, and make sure that community values are protected and uh, the developer yep. uh, actually has a reasonable sense of uh, knowing beginning to end and how long that that's going to be and you know I don't I don't know any municipality that's got that right yet um, so I think that dialogue would be would be great to have before we end I'm uh, curious if you have any questions of the Green Party or any comments to make well I'm now that we're the subject of housing affordability and I'm interested in hearing what the Green Party's thoughts are on particularly the question you just asked me what is the role for government, and and uh, if you, if the Green Party were to say form government under your leadership, what kind of changes would you see making, if any? Well, we have several things that we've talked about. Uh, you know, you mentioned earlier that there's a there's a whole bunch of developments that are sitting uh, virtually empty, uh, lots of space, and so we thought some investment from government uh, into some sort of a rental stock. Uh, could be immediately made by uh, investing in some of those projects so that we could deal with homelessness issues. And uh, that's kind mm -hmm. of scary for people because there's a sense, well, I don't want those people in my building. Yeah. Uh, and yet every uh, experience where there's been housing first policies have shown that you're better off if you uh, get a person in a house mm -hmm. where they're not concentrated with a lot of other people mm -hmm. th with, that, with that same condition. Yeah. And then you provide them with services so that yeah. they can actually maintain that house. So that was one, one thing that we proposed. Um, we also uh, proposed an investment of 1% um, of the provincial budget in some sort of housing uh, project so that over the course of a few years we could get deal with the homelessness project. Mm. Uh, uh, prospect of, of trying to get people into homes. Uh, we, we actually believe that housing is a, is a human right. And so the fact that we have shelters and more and more shelter beds is not a solution for us to, mm -hmm. that, to deal with that human right. Yep. The um, bigger issue for us is uh, related to housing affordability and housing affordability is really related not only to the market, which is, uh, I, I believe, too high, but mm -hmm. also to income. And yep. so um, we, we propose alternate solutions to dealing with the lack of income for certain mm -hmm. people, um, basic income supplements for those people who uh, may not be able to generate the income that they need on their own. And, mm -hmm. and uh, we think that there's uh, good economics related to that, mm -hmm. a good business case to be made for mm -hmm. um, making sure that they're, uh, you know, everybody is living above the poverty line, which, which gives people more choices in yeah. the kind of housing that they would yeah. have and we're not then on the hook for building so-called social housing and it, you know it's a very complex and all kinds of interrelationships um, but uh, that were those are some of the things that we would propose I, I really do like the fact that in your thinking uh, it isn't about government creating affordable housing that there is a market reason for that affordable housing to be uh, yep. available and to be economic because um, you know quite frankly I believe in market-based solutions yep. I think that when market-based solutions fail it's because uh, of uh, government interference or per government policy um, or industrial mm -hmm. policy that favors some industries over other in the cor corporate welfare kind of stuff yep. Um, so, which is a, I don't want to go into a rant on corporate welfare. So I, I don't know if that's answered your questions, but um, yep. uh, I, I, like you, believe in dignity. I believe that people should have choice. I believe that people should be able to make the right choices for their family, that the government shouldn't be making yep. those choices, which is what I think a lot of social housing is about. And uh, for the most part, I think that with good regulation and the government getting out of the way, um, the developers will uh, will find the solutions that we need. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank yes. you very much for your time, John. And thank you, this Jane. is so exciting. It's just like every every day I get a new piece to the puzzle of how yeah. we could get a sustainable society. And this is another one. You've reframed my thinking about mm. um, not only about social enterprise and uh, and corporates corporate structures that allow us to. Uh, to say we are part of our community and that's important and we're going to have a mission that yeah. builds our community, um, but also that 
um, we can have housing for the long term that is not based in a belief in perpetual acceleration of, of price, that it's based in our ability to live um, continuously within the same income range without that need for the stress of trying to always being, be do, doing more and making more. Uh, so yep. you've, you've yep. uh, put another piece of the puzzle for me about what would make a sustainable BC, and I thank you very much for that. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Mm -hmm.